What's up everyone, Pete Coco here. I'm a photographer with Studio New York and a Fuji film fan. And today I'm gonna to discuss some of my top accessories that I have picked up for my X-T5 to improve my user experience and hopefully improve my end result photos. Now, a lot of the things I'm gonna talk about today, I had already and used with my X-T4 and also with my X-Pro1. So some of this is not gonna be new to those of you who have been in the Fuji system, but for those of you who are new to the Fuji line and just got an X-T5, you will find a lot of what I'm gonna say here helpful to you, so stay tuned. Now, before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Gently press that like button. There is no need to smash it. And make sure you leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. I always love hearing from you. One other thing, download my free PDF that's gonna give you five portrait tips to make your portrait photography better. And also visit my sponsors in the description below. Now the first thing that I picked up for my X-T5 was a grip. So the thing that people love about this camera is that it's a little bit smaller than the X-T4. And I honestly love that too. And in my, in my initial review of the X-T5, I talked about how the grip is good. I like the grip, I like it being smaller, but sometimes it felt a little small when my pinky was kind of escaping under the camera, which I wasn't crazy about. But the shape of the grip, something is a little different than the X-T4 and it's actually more comfortable in some ways. The problem is when you're using a lens bigger than like the small lens I have on here right now, the camera can tend to feel a little bit small. The other thing is, for those of you who are obsessive about keeping your gear perfect, if you do a lot of tripod work like I do, mounting the camera on and off tripods and on and off tether plates and things like that will scratch up your bottom plate. And I, I actually already got a little bit of a, of a line there because I had been using it before I picked this up. So what I got was this. Now there's a ton of different grips available. So you gotta research that, but I picked up the small rig grip because I liked the shape, I liked the size, and I liked the fact that it matched my camera, which is the silver. Now, it only adds just like a quarter of an inch to the bottom of the camera, but it makes a huge difference in the uh, way the camera handles. It's really nice, and in fact, I find myself using it more than not, even with a smaller lens. So basically, it just screws onto the bottom of the camera, and it gives you options. It gives you three uh, connection points for a tripod, and it protects the bottom of the camera, and you can still change your battery while it's on the camera. Now, while I was researching this grip, I was surprised because on Amazon, the reviews are really, really mixed, and for any of you who have used small rig products uh, in the past, you know that they're usually the best products out there for, the, for uh, cages and things like that for cameras. They're usually made very well. So I was a little upset by that and I decided, well, let me just buy it on Amazon. If like other reviewers say, it didn't like, cause the, a lot of the problems that people said they had with it was it doesn't fit right. It's shifting a little bit and this kind of stuff. And I said, let me try it out. Cause this is the one that I would want more than the other ones. If it, isn't good, I'll send it back and just get another one. So that's what I did. And luckily for me, uh, it fits almost perfectly. Now I will tell you, when I got this originally, uh, and this is something that people were complaining about online, is that it wasn't completely flush to the bottom. So my on my copy, it was a little bit like tilted this way out. So all I did was um, just give it a really gentle little tweak and then I got it to more or less sit flush. Now, to be honest, it's not perfect still, which I find to be strange. And in fact, the first time I opened the battery cover, I realized too, the battery cover didn't pop right open because it was catching just a little bit. So I had to give it a little adjustment. I don't know why, why, they, uh, why they're having that kind of quality control issue with it. But outside of those little tiny things, because um, again, on my copy, it was almost perfect. I really have been enjoying it and it was priced right. It was only, I think, $39. Um, so it wasn't super expensive. So I would recommend you check that out. Even if you don't like the small rig or if you don't wanna uh, deal with the hassle of if you have to send it back, assuming your copy doesn't come perfect, then there's a ton of different grips you can check out. Different you know, companies make them, a lot of off-brands. The Fuji one is like 100 and 
30 or 140 bucks, something like that. It's a ridiculous amount of money for a little piece of metal that attaches to the bottom of the camera. So that's why I didn't buy the Fuji brand. But I do uh, recommend the small rig after using it. I think it's, it's, it's nice, it works well. And again, if you don't mind risking maybe a quality control where you have to send it back and just try again or get a different one, this was the one that I liked the best. I think it matches the camera really beautifully. It looks nice on the camera, as you can see. And get the camera to focus on me, on the, on the camera. It looks really nice. And I'm digging it. All right, so that's the first thing that I recommend you get. Now, let's talk about something that should have came with the camera but doesn't, battery charger. Now, I, I don't know why these companies, not all of them, but a company like, like Fuji, they will uh, happily take you know, 1,700 bucks for a camera and they don't give you a battery charger. I think that's ridiculous, right? Because the camera will charge the battery. Okay, that's fine, but what happens when you're using the camera and you want to charge another battery and you need to switch? Obviously, there's problems with that. And I have an issue with that. I think it's, it's, it's really not, um, it's not fair to spend that much on a camera and they don't give you a charger. But putting that aside, the next thing you want to get if you have an X-T5 is just a very inexpensive uh, charger. You can find them on Amazon. And I picked up this one, which is uh, you know one of these off-brand chargers. I'll, I'll put the link in the description. I don't even know what it's called. But I like this one because it has two bays to charge the battery, so you can charge two batteries, and it has an indicator, and I've been using it, and it works well, it works fine. So you're gonna have to go ahead and pick up a charger and an additional battery. This is something you definitely don't wanna leave home without. Uh, even though the X-T5 is awesome in the battery life, it's much better than the X-T4, but you, know, you still don't wanna go out for a full day of shooting with one battery. So there you go, not gonna harp on that, but you wanna get yourself a battery charger. Next, let's talk about straps. Now, you can see I have a bunch of straps on here. Let's talk about neck straps first. So this is the neck strap that comes with the camera. I, now this is really made well, it's very padded, it's really thick, but I absolutely hate this neck strap for this camera, and I hated the same one for my X-T4. Why? Well. The reason I don't like this strap is because it's just too big and bulky for a camera that's supposed to be small, compact, and discreet. And I find that uh, having a big strap like this with a smaller camera, it just kind of is not conducive to using the camera for street photography or any kind of stuff where like I do a lot of like natural light concert photography and I want to use the camera without having it um, feel like something bulky and also not be so visible. So when you have a big neck strap like this, you know, it's just going to increase the, the visibility of the camera. So I don't like it uh, and I don't recommend it. And even though it's, it's funny, it's like as the cameras, the new cameras come out, everything gets bigger, right? The smaller cameras get bigger. So Fuji finally went the other direction with the X-T5. They made it a little smaller, got back to its roots, but they kept the giant chunky strap. Now, if you're carrying around huge lenses, okay, yeah, you might wanna have this strap. But those of us who are using a camera like this, most likely we're not shooting uh, very, very long lenses. We're using smaller lenses and something more compact. So what I recommend, instead of using that, is get yourself a small, thin leather strap. This is gonna be so much more discreet. It's not gonna take up a lot of room. And like this one, this, this is a Fujifilm strap. Now, this, this strap actually came with, um, I believe it came with my um, X100 that I got many years ago. X100, what did I have? Maybe a V or a T, I can't remember. I sold it, but this strap, is thin, it's leather, it doesn't get in your way, it's perfect. It's perfect for the camera. It pairs up nicely with a small camera that the whole purpose of it is to be discreet. So what I recommend is you get yourself a thin leather strap. Now I don't have a specific recommendation for it, I don't think it matters. I kept the old strap for my camera and that's why I have a Fuji brand. That's why I put also my X-Pro1 out because you can see it has also a thin leather strap. And this is also a Fujifilm. 
Um, so that's what I recommend. A strap like this is gonna make the camera so much more comfortable. Uh, it's not heavy, you don't need something thick, and it's gonna keep in line with the camera being discreet. So that's what I recommend in a, in a, in a neck strap. Besides getting a neck strap, you do wanna also get a wrist strap. Now I picked up this particular wrist strap for I think like 16 or 17 bucks on Amazon and I absolutely love it. Now it's uh, thick, it's made well and you just tether it right to the strap lock here on the camera and now you have the best of both worlds because there's times where I don't wanna carry around a neck strap. For instance, if I'm doing street photography out on my own, I don't have anyone or anything with me, I will just take this little wrist strap because it's very, very discreet and it's easy to walk around with it in your hand, on your side, you can't drop it because it's tethered to you and you don't have to worry about that and it just makes it very easy to do uh, street photography. I want to have also a neck strap because there's times where say I'm out with my family and I have two small children. And the problem is if any of those, any of you who have kids know if you're out for a day with your two small kids, you're gonna need both hands a lot of times. They're always asking you to carry something or hold something or do this or do that. So that's when I will put on the neck strap. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on this stuff. I know there's a lot of options. And there's also options that have like a little clicky strap lock. But this is so easy, I'm gonna show you, to take off. And it doesn't have a, any kind of a strap locking mechanism with like a little clip. You just feed it through and it comes right off. It's that simple. So there you go. You wanna have a neck strap and a, a shoulder strap I'm sorry, a neck strap and a wrist strap. The next thing I want to talk about, which most of you probably already have, but is probably the, the first even more important accessory than getting a grip that you want to get if you have an X-T5, is a soft release shutter button. Now the one on here, it's really cool, it's this blue color. I got this one years ago for my X-Pro1, and you can see I have a little, just a simple red shutter release button on this. And I really like the way this one looks. I like the blue. So let me explain this for a second. So basically a soft release is just a little button that screws into the top of the regular shutter button on the camera. Um, the shutter button on the camera, as is, isn't the most tactile and it doesn't have the most um, feedback like you'd want in a shutter button. Once you put on one of these little tiny ones and make sure when you do, it comes with a little gasket. You gotta make sure the gasket is on the shutter button before you screw it on. And all you, it's just a screw thread. You screw it right in, be very careful that you don't cross thread it or damage it. And then it just makes the whole experience so much more uh, pleasant. And it also gives you much more feedback in your finger. So when I'm half pressing to focus or tracking a subject, it's much easier with the soft release button than it is just using the button that the camera has. Because the button on the camera is sort of flat and it's low, so you really gotta get your finger in there to press the regular shutter button. This is kind of the first thing people will tell you if you, if you own a Fuji camera you wanna get. Now, the other thing is, obviously, when you use a Fuji camera, you care about the aesthetics. We care about the aesthetics too much, I think, probably, but I digress on that. It just looks super cool with that shutter button. Uh, so I highly recommend you get one of those. Okay, that's basically it. Those are just some accessories I want to talk to you about. This is what's kind of made my experience using the camera better. But before I wrap this up, I want to talk real quick about lenses. Uh, now this is, a lens is, is an accessory, sort of, maybe not exactly like something else we've discussed. But for those of you who are newer into the system or, or diving into the system, I have two recommendations. Number one, get yourself a fast lens. I always get the fastest lens I can afford. There's a couple of reasons you wanna do that. Number one, there's a huge difference between a 1.4 lens, for instance, or a 1.8 lens and a 2.8 lens. You're talking a massive amount of light difference. So like this lens, the 35 1.4, which this is the old original one, which I still recommend. It's just one of the best lenses they, they've made. 
That 1.4 is gonna make a huge difference if you're shooting, say, indoor concert photography or indoor family photos where there's not a great deal of natural light or even if you're outside during dusk or during even in, in the daytime where you want to shoot wide open. So I would say your best bet is to go with the fastest lens you can afford and then definitely get yourself a prime lens. So the 35 on here is roughly around a 50 millimeter equivalent in full frame. This is kind of my standard lens. Um, there's some great lenses out there now. Uh, you can see if you check out my channel, I did some reviews on the Sigma line. Sigma has some great fast lenses that are not gonna break the bank. And some of them are 1.4 lenses. That would be my recommendation. So a little faster, it's gonna be the better way to go. The other thing is for your lens, you wanna get one of these. Now, some of the Fujis come with these. Um, maybe all of them, all of the ones that I've used and tested come with a lens hood. But the lens hood is really something you want to have. And I love the lens hood also of the 35 because it's metal and it's one of those old fashioned style ones with the squared edges. So it just looks super cool. But I don't use UV filters. I feel like a UV filter is kind of the worst thing you can put on a lens. I've never understood we spend um, hundreds and thou or thousands of dollars on the best glass we can find. And then like, well, let me take like a, like a $20 cheap piece of glass now and I'm gonna cover the front of it. So I know that there's people who are really wanna protect the, the elements and are like, no, you gotta have a UV filter. I don't have filters on any of my lenses and luckily I've never scratched any of them. So what I'll do is I'll put on a lens hood. So if I'm carrying this bad boy around all day long, I'll just have the lens hood on here because that's gonna defray most bumps and bruises and you don't have to worry about um, having a UV filter on there. Yes, it does make the, the lens a little bit bigger, but if you're using a small lens like this, it's not gonna make a huge difference. But having a lens hood on your lens is another way to kind of keep it from being scratched without having to put a $20 cheap UV filter on the front of it. Uh, Zoom lenses are great, but again, if you're traveling light and you want something super fast, the best recommendation is to have a fast lens. All right, well, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you found this quick video uh, educational, somewhat informative. Let me know your favorite accessories for your Fuji cameras in the, the comments section below. And as I said before, don't forget to download my free PDF. Go and check out my sponsors. You can get some deals from a bunch of different companies. And as always, make sure you go out and take some great pictures. Have an awesome day, and I will see you all next time. Peace.